We are here in Dr. Lynn Brandenberger's backyard. He is the food crop specialist for OSU Extension. And you're going to share with us something you built a couple of years ago, your hoop house. Right, right. Why, why did you build a hoop house over your raised beds? Well, obviously we like to have food year round. Fresh, okay. fresh uh, vegetables, mm -hmm. and so in this structure we can grow fresh vegetables all through the winter. Um, we have to pick our crops right, but we can do it. Right. And uh, so it just makes it a lot handier for us. So you've got warmer tem temperatures in the winter time to grow those crops, right. and in the summertime it gets hotter also. So right. what are you going to do going into those warmer temperatures to keep that heat down? Well, the way this hoop house is made, uh, the sides we can take some wires off and then the sides will actually roll clear up. Oh, okay. And so we'll get full flow of air through there. Right. Uh, the other thing that helps regulate the temperature is this hoop house is about 10 foot tall. So it has a lot of space up above in the attic. Allowing that heat to rise yeah. up. So even in the winter time, it can get really hot in there really fast. Okay. All right. So you've got some cool season crops growing in here. A few. You want to go in and take <laughs> a look at them? Sure. Okay. Looks like you've got a nice crop of crimson clover growing here. Yeah, we do. Um, one of the things that I try to do is, is to use uh, more sustainable methods uh -huh. uh, to uh, have manage our soil here. And so this uh, cover crop was planted last fall. Uh, it's been in the ground all winter. Okay. And it's, it's a legume. It's, mm -hmm. it's actually inoculated with a bacteria that helps it capture or, or nitrogen out of the air. Did you have to inoculate it or did it come? It was pre-inoculated okay. seed. Okay. Yeah. So anyway, uh, you let it grow up nice and tall and it, it, it gets a lot of nitrogen and then we have all this nice organic matter that you see here. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to basically just uh, mow this, grind it all up with a lawnmower mm -hmm. and then we're going to uh, till it into the soil. Okay. And you'll get to see my tiller in action. So you mentioned that these seeds came pre-inoculated mm -hmm. and they are a legume. So can you describe what that means a little bit more? Uh, yes, uh, a legume is a crop that's in the bean and pea family. Mm -hmm. um, and so it has this uh, symbiotic relationship with a bacteria. And so the bacteria, what it does is it's able to take nitrogen out of the air and fix it into the soil mm -hmm. and into the plant so the plant can use it. And then the plant provides a place for the bacteria to live and it actually forms little nodules on its roots. And then that's where the bacteria actually hangs out. So you've kind of got this, you know, the bacteria is like, woohoo, got a free apartment. And then the plant says, well, hey, this works out great for me because I get some nitrogen, which is a major plant uh, element that the plant needs. And that's one of the nice things about legumes is that they allow this bacteria to grow and bring more nitrogen into the soil naturally, more organically than adding synthetic fertilizers. Right, and actually all the nitrogen, most of it's tied up in the plant, mm -hmm. so then as the plant breaks down, it's released so slowly, kind of like a slow release. Right, fertilizer. so it, it's kind of storing that fertilizer for you. So right. now we're going to cut this down and you'll allow that to decompose into the soil, getting that nitrogen back. Right, so what we'll do is once we get this soil prepared, mm -hmm. then we're gonna start planting our summer crops. So we'll actually be putting some tomatoes in here because Dina, my wife, must mm -hmm. have tomatoes. Absolutely. And so um, <laughs> that's, that's what this bed will be used for this summer. Okay, excellent. So behind us here, you also have another bed that there's nothing planted in it right now. You decided right. not to do a cover crop in this. Um, will you do a cover crop at some point in this bed? Uh, yes, um, we have kind of a uh, unique situation. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe not so unique. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of gardeners have We this. all have problems, right? So yeah. what is our problem with uh, this okay, soil? Okay, there is trouble in paradise. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so we have all this beautiful sandy loam soil uh -huh. that we purchased and we brought and put into these raised beds. And uh, actually what we found out was that soil's full of nematodes. Okay. 
And so you've done a test and you found out, you've looked under a microscope that there are nematodes in the soil um, and that affects your crops, the roots of your crops mm -hmm. and stuff. So how are you going to get rid of these nematodes? Well, uh, in the past, we've actually solarized the soil and that's all we've done. Okay. Uh, which basically heats the soil up to about 150 degrees naturally okay. through sunshine. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, that brings the population of these nematodes down considerably and then you can grow for two or three years. Uh, but this year we're going to try something different. Okay. Uh, we're going to plant a cover crop of mustard and uh, this is a mustard that's been bred for high levels of chemicals that actually are biofumigants. Okay. They're naturally occurring. Okay. And so we'll grow that cover crop on there and then chop it all up and put it into the soil and then we will tarp it with clear plastic and and uh, we'll actually solarize with all that in there. Okay, so you're going to first grow a crop here um, right. and it's not like we can see nematodes or anything. This is microscopic that you've got to look under a microscope to see these. Right, and they're, they look like small. red wigglers in there, you know, right. and they're going crazy. Right, so you're going to then plant the um, mustard, let right. it to grow for a while and then come back through, chop it down and then put clear plastic over it. Well, after we work the mustard into the after soil. After you till the mustard in the yeah. soil. Okay, and so that will heat that up, allowing those fumigants to come out of that mustard plant right. and kind of gas out the nematodes, correct? Yeah, uh, correct. So it won't necessarily kill all the nematodes, right? We're trying to really reduce the population though? Right, it's gonna, it's gonna bring the population way down. Okay. Because okay. not only are we gonna heat the soil way up, which works that way too, but then we're also going to add this biofumigant, which is, it should be a great combination. Excellent. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you, Lynn, for sharing yeah. your backyard with us. All right. We hope you enjoyed this video. It's part of our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. You can also find even more videos on our OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel. And join us on social media for great gardening tips, photos, and discussion.